In part three of our three part series about the wise cams and getting the most out of these small smart home cameras, I'm going to take those well outside what would be considered a normal smart home installation. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by helping you consider these very inexpensive cameras well outside what would be considered the norm for your smart home. So let's start with some of the power options because the wise cams are really interesting in this regard. In terms of power, what you can expect, and this is right on the adapter, is five volts DC at one amp. So that's actually the physical requirement. Now, in practice, what you are actually going to find is about two watts of usage. At least that's been my testing as an average. Now they can peak up to four and that's kind of expecting, you know, a big change in wattage based on the night vision and really all the other things running. I actually, when I was getting the two watts on average, I had the SD card running continuously. I had everything turned on to full and I even did turn on night vision in some cases, but I didn't really see major spikes above that two, two and a half watts. Either way, if you can deliver the one amp at five volts continuously, then you are going to be essentially replacing that power adapter that goes into the wall. Now, this means that you can attach it to battery power and before you guys ask about solar installations, you know what, you can do it, but the panels are quite large and the actual installation is quite large as well. So I'm going to leave a link down below to one of the only installations that I saw that met the code requirements that you have when you start to deal with solar and batteries, you have to have regulation of that charging and the discharge. So you really have to think about that kind of an installation and whether or not you need it. But remember, for a battery pack, that's actually something really easy that you can do. And you can actually do a very simple calculation with that two watt maximum for how long you'd get out of any battery pack before having to go and recharge it. One thing for the pan cam, basically take the requirements and double it. Now that's not the voltage, it's still five volts, but you will have up to two amps and you will have that up to four watts in many cases and what's getting you there is that movement of the actual little motor there that will get you and the night vision ir light on the pan cams. One of the things that people often want to do with smart home cameras is they want to put them in odd locations and so power over ethernet has become a really important thing that that we talk about with any smart home camera really and the wise cams have an option for this this gives you the ability to essentially run ethernet cabling as your power cabling and that's really important for not having to necessarily call an electrician to come out and do that and i'm not recommending you do this without talking to an electrician because you want to make sure your country codes allow you to do this within your smart home but what you can physically do here is you can take this little connection kit which allows you you to connect into a power adapter, put an ethernet in between the two USB to ethernet adapters and then connect into the wise cam and this becomes a really really simple way to power your wise cam. Speaking of specialized power setups, you can actually daisy chain these cameras together. That's actually the reason for that second USB connector at the top as well as powering the WISE bridge, but you can actually use this to daisy chain a number of these cameras together. One really new option to go and take your WISE cams and get something more out of them is as a webcam and this is really important with everything going on in the world right now with that virus, but the webcam is actually really reliable. It's been uh, great quality for me and it replaces a hundred dollar webcam that I purchased a while ago and I think it looks every bit as good and maybe better in a lot of cases. That tutorial for how to do that is down below. Now I'm not going to talk about outdoor housings. I mean there's a million out there, but I want you to think about heat dissipation before you go and attach a housing to this. 
what oftentimes those housings are doing is really protecting from the rain. So as long as you don't get these cameras wet, they have performed really well for me outdoors, well over 30 degrees Celsius and well under minus 20 degrees Celsius, but you cannot get them wet and the internal components getting wet at all is going to spell the end for these cameras. RTSP was a really important uh, firmware release that Wise gave us and I did a tutorial and a setup video on that so I'll leave that link down below as well but RTSP allows you to connect in to some of those other systems that you might have installed in your home so this can then go and replace a lot of those older camera systems that maybe you have just lost one camera and you don't want to lose the whole system I get that you can install that firmware on these and get it connected into that system one thing about these specialized firmware so RTSP and webcam they're not continuing development with those and they're not going to bring that back into the main kind of wise application your cameras essentially leave the application at that point and they become part of the other system that you're attaching them to. So for RTSP, you know, if you want to return this to a regular Wise Cam, well, you can do that. You just have to go and download the original firmware or the latest firmware and install that back on that camera. One of the nicest features that Wise has given us is the ability to continuously record. Now, we talked about the installation of that micro SD card, but one of the best things you can do with continuous recording is actually take this thing on the road. And you can use it as a dash cam in a very easy way. So essentially, before you leave your home, turn on that continuous recording and leave your home. Now, that would mean that it is recording that entire time. And I did that with very long drives on a number of occasions with that very wise cam sitting there. Now, you could also bring the wise cams and that continuous recording capability on vacation. And you could bring this into a hotel room if you'd like, but I've actually found that a trailer is a really good situation so if you're someone who goes camping and you bring your trailer with you you can actually use this really successfully because you could actually broadcast a Wi-Fi network when you'd like with one phone and then use a secondary device like a tablet to log in and look at recordings or just look at the camera feeds themselves. One of the most useful features is actually time lapse and this can be used in a couple of different ways. Mostly people use it for really interesting videos or they've created a really interesting time lapse video of a plant growing or shrinking or whatever they want to do. Now that's that's great, that's a lot of fun. But the time lapse feature can be very useful in terms of troubleshooting something going on. Now, if you're not familiar with time lapse, it's basically taking a time, uh, a snapshot every so often and stitching that together as a video for you. Now, what that can be really useful for, let's say, outside of your home you're noticing some damage somewhere and you kind of want to figure out what's happening because it's happening on a regular basis well use time lapse over an evening and you will probably be able to scrub that very quickly instead of having to scrub hours and hours of that continuous recording setting or continuous video recording there you go guys this is the end of our three-part series with wise now obviously if you have more questions or you think we need a fourth video here for some reason I'm open to that let me know in the comments down below and of course I want to know about your unique ways that you are using these wise cams now up on screen are the other two parts of this three-part series you can go watch those refresh yourselves on how to extend the platform or just configure these cameras in general to get the most out of them otherwise thanks for watching and of course don't hate automate